It was at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month in 1918 that the guns fell silent around Europe. The legacy of the devastating loss of life in the First World War has shaped the way we remember our dead. Many of the traditions now so familiar come from the determination of one generation not to forget what they had lived through. The idea for the two minute silence observed at the 11th hour came in a letter to a newspaper published in the London Evening News in May 1919. It caught the imagination of King George V and a royal proclamation was issued calling for the silence so that the thoughts of everybody should be concentrated on remembrance. It became obvious of the significance when the cenotaph was unveiled in 1919. Its steps were spontaneously covered in wreaths by members of the public. The temporary wood and plaster monument was built in stone in recognition of its importance. It's now the focus of each Remembrance Sunday, remembering the dead of each conflict, however controversial. But it's the poppy which has become the most enduring symbol of Remembrance Day. The first poppy appeal was held in 1921, the founding year of the Royal British Legion. Red silk poppies, inspired by the famous First World War poem in Flanders Fields, sold out instantly. The funds helped World War veterans find employment and housing after the war. It was immortalised in one of the most famous First World War poems in Flanders Fields, which was written by John McRae. He saw the flowers bloom from his makeshift medical station. Yet in 1915 in Flanders Fields the poppies grow between the crosses row on row. The flowers blossomed in the churned up earth of the western front covering the battlefields with their blood red petals. The annual poppy appeal still raises money for soldiers and their families. Last year a record £40 million from the sale of the paper flowers and charity events went to the Royal British Legion. The Legion gives support to those left disabled through armed service, whether through conflict or not, provides residential care and pensions and helps reach and resettle those leaving the forces. But for many it's the bravery of those First World War veterans that still prompts us to wear a poppy. In May 2012 the last living male First World War combat veteran died at the age of 110. For your generation, the challenge will be to keep this symbol and memory alive. A writer, Robert Lawrence Binion, who later found himself at war, wrote the words found on countless war memorials. Published in the Times newspaper in 1914, just one verse of his poem, For the Fallen, is recited at commemorative events. Its closing lines are a reminder that we should never forget, after the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them.